I'll tell you a little bit about Habana Labs. I'm uh, the head of software products there. And uh, Habana Labs is a, uh, was a startup that was acquired by uh, Intel in uh, late 2019. And the company was uh, focused primarily on building purpose-built uh, AI processors for deep learning training and inference. Uh, specifically to address a need in that space in, that, in the sense that um, uh, you know, we wanted to find a architecture uh, and a software stack that would be tuned for deep learning applications. And we'll hear a little bit more in my talk about you know, how we are managing to do that with this architecture and software stack. Um, and in the last two years, we've been busy also, uh, we just launched uh, our Gaudi product uh, in October on AWS. As the uh, is powers the uh, DL1 instance, uh, we have the uh, we have Supermicro, Supermicro as a partner, and we just announced at Intel Vision our next generation products. And I'll tell you a little bit about our next generation product. But primarily, I'm going to be focusing on on the Gaudi architecture software stack. Primarily, given that I am responsible for the software story. Um, so that's that about a little bit about Habana and, and what I plan to be covering in this talk. So um, I know a lot of people have heard about uh, uh, Gaudi 2. I just wanted to uh, give you a little sneak preview if you haven't seen it. We are uh, uh, happy and excited to introduce our uh, next generation Gaudi. Uh, it is a seven nanometer product and has leadership performance. You can see here that it's um, 2x better throughput compared to A100 for uh, popular vision and language models, we are seeing the performance for ResNet 50 and BERT here. We have our first generation Gaudi for uh, those who are interested in getting started with Gaudi. Like I said, we have the EC2 DL1 instances, which are powered by Habana Gaudi. And on the uh, on-premise, we have uh, Supermicro uh, offering the X12 Gaudi servers, and we have partnered with DDN as well to have a solution with both the supermicro system and the storage. So, um, so why did why are we focused on deep learning training? It's it's uh, there's a huge demand in the ecosystem uh, for specifically deep learning. Um, in a recent IDC study, 74% uh, of the participants uh, indicated that they're running five to ten iterations of training, and over half of them. Uh, are building models or rebuilding models weekly or more often. So there's this big demand for uh, continuing to, uh, you know, kind of expand the usage of training. And there's this need for us to serve this uh, set of customers with, with uh, opportunities to, to actually take advantage of uh, AI acceleration in this space. But what is the biggest barrier for all these companies who are trying to build out these applications uh, and move to AI and adopt AI, uh, the feedback is that 56% are reporting that cost is the most significant challenge. So as an industry for us, it's, it's a broader challenge. How do we give more access to more affordable training? And this is the one problem that we are trying to address from the Havana side. So I'd like to introduce Gaudi from, from the perspective of how we have thought about addressing the deep learning training challenge with respect to cost and efficiency. Like I said, it's designed from the ground up specifically for solving the AI deep learning training problem. It has a heterogeneous compute architecture and we've got a, uh, a matrix math engine for all of the matrix multiplications. We've got a cluster of tensor processing cores where the nonlinear and element wise ops are going to get accelerated. It's got a software managed memory architecture with 32 gigabytes of HBM2. Uh, memory and this actually is act helpful in terms of porting applications that are running on uh, your uh, GPUs, which have similar uh, amount of HPM. So you're not spending a lot of effort in trying to um, port over uh, from a memory uh, perspective. Like the tra training regime is is sim similar to OE100, so it should work on a Gaudi as well. The cool thing that Gaudi also offers is that this is one of the first um, uh, chips that actually integrates. 10 ports of 100 gigabit Ethernet Rocky on the die. So what this allows us to do is uh, basically uh, uh, accelerate the, the ability of, of uh, customers uh. to scale out very efficiently. So it, it allows you to flexibly scale. Um, it's based on an industry standard. So you don't have like a proprietary interface and it's standards based. You don't have a vendor lock-in. 
Um, and the fact that this, these NICs are integrated on die and you're not using discrete components means you are saving costs as well. And in terms of building out a cluster, uh, you just need standard off the shelf ethernet switches to connect across multiple servers and actually build out a cluster. So this is fairly easy to kind of build an infrastructure with your accelerator fabric just using ethernet. Uh, I wanna also call out the picture on the right. It's a, a, a picture of our Gaudi card. Uh, you can see that it's the uh, OCP OAM form factor. Uh, given that we are fans of industry standard, that's another uh, aspect, even from the hardware perspective, that we're embracing industry standard formats. Consider the, uh, I, is it the board or the, ch I guess it's the board. Would that be equivalent to like a uh, NVIDIA GPU? I mean, is that, and what's the performance difference between, let's say, an A100 with I don't know, 40 gigabytes of HBM and two. Sure. So this is an OCP OAM uh, form factor. So in a server, there will be eight such cards that, that we put out in, uh, in a super microsystem and then you can connect up those cards. So it's like each Gaudi chip is like uh, an A100 or a V100 uh, card. So I wanted to introduce, because some of the metrics I'm going to show are related to DL1, um, are Gaudi-based EC2 DL1 training instances. And uh, these have 40% uh, better price performance than the latest GPU-based instances. They have eight Gaudi processors. Um, and those who are used to the EC2, um, using EC2 for, for deep learning training are familiar with deep learning AMIs and deep learning containers. Uh, we can uh, basically get started with Gaudi in exactly the same way that they're used to. So it's very seamless in terms of coming into EC2 and launching an instance and starting off with the right AMIs and container images. Um, for containerized applications, uh, we have uh, support for ECS and EKS, which is Kubernetes, uh, Amazon's Kubernetes version uh, to kind of do distributed, uh, uh, distributed orchestration of your containerized application. On the bottom, it, you know, there, that's just the specs of the Gaudi-based uh, DL1 instance. It has eight Gaudis, 96 vCPUs. Um, you'll notice the on-demand price of $13.11. It's 60% lower than the on-demand price of an EC2 P4 D instances, which have eight uh, 40 gig A100 GPUs. Um, so for this one, if you look at the performance, we have, uh, I'm using ResNet as a proxy for vision and BERT large as a proxy for language models. So here I'm showing you the performance of ResNet 50. Um, this is, you'll see that the two blue lines, uh, two green lines is one is for V100 and the other is A100. And the blue line is the Gaudi performance. So Gaudi is a 16 nanometer product, but irrespective from the, from the strengths of its architecture and the software stack we have and the optimizations, you can see that the performance actually lands between a V100 and an A100, both for single card and eight card. Um, on our uh, developer page, we have more information on scaling out additional beyond uh, eight devices. You, you, we've gone up to many, many more uh, nodes and we can we publish the performance there as well. Uh, similarly for BERT large, I have two pictures here. One is phase one and the other is phase two. The training regime is different in each. So the performance is different. So just want to be uh, clear that you're seeing two parts of how you train BERT large. Uh, for phase one, again, you'll see, you know, Gaudi lands between V100 and A100. Similarly for phase two and the combined throughput, we again are, are somewhere in the middle. Um, so the interesting part is if you now factor in the cost, this is the cost savings you get, right? For, for ResNet 50, it is 46% savings compared to an A100 and 60% cost savings compared to OV100. And for BERT large, it's 31% uh, uh, cost savings and 54% uh, cost savings versus A100 and V100, 57 and 75% on phase two. So, you know, the the benefit here is that you 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 get a, a reasonable performance and the cost performance advantage is significant. You get a very uh, compelling cost savings with Gaudi. Mm -hmm. Then I wanted like if, like all of this coolness is in terms of the architecture, in terms of the hardware capabilities. But if we don't have a software stack that accompanies it and makes it easy for the end users to take advantage of it, then we're kind of not allowing them to take advantage of that hardware. So. We've spent a lot of effort on our Synapse AI software suite to optimize it for performance and ease of use. We've picked TensorFlow and PyTorch, which are two of the most popular frameworks. 
and integrated our software stack with it. So uh, our users are primarily data scientists and uh, ML developers who work with TensorFlow and PyTorch. Um, the main thing is that you know the, there's a framework integration layer that takes the subset of the graph that can be accelerated by Gaudi. Uh, Synapse AI does all of the optimizations, the graph compiler, uh, and the communication libraries, uh, along with the rich kernel library, where we've got a whole lot of performance optimized kernels for our hardware. A combination of that allows us to generate the, the optimized binary recipe that gets executed on the device. Now there are uh, a class of uh, programmers who do write custom kernels and we wanted to empower them to continue to write that uh, with uh, Gaudi as well. So we've opened up our TPC for programmability. So there are, there's a toolkit we offer for TPC programming. You can write your custom kernels and you register it with the custom kernel library. And then it's combined with this Havana kernel library. You start using your custom kernels with Havana's kernel library. Um, so this is just the software stack. And I'm going to spend a little time saying, OK, you know, if you, even if you've got the software stack, putting it in the hands of the end users and making them be productive and effective with this is, again, a very critical piece of the story. So we've spent, again, a lot of effort and energy in building up our developer site, putting out content on GitHub, uh, making it accessible and easy for people to get started with uh, Gaudi through Synapse AI. So I want to talk about just the developer side, and then we'll jump into the code changes. So here we, I want to just like a snapshot of the screen you'll see if you go to developer.habana.ai. Um, we've got a lot of collateral, a wealth of information available for anybody who can come in. And it's like, we want to empower self-service. We don't want to do a lot of hand-holding. We want people to come in there get your DL1 instance or get access to a super micro server, get started, get up and running as much as you can on your own. So you feel empowered to actually take advantage of, of the benefits and, uh, of Gaudi. Uh, we have a lot of uh, uh, collateral in terms of uh, simple tutorials on making it very easy with little nuggets of information to get started. Uh, for those, you know, those come with Jupyter notebooks for those who are very hands-on. Uh, we have video tutorials who, for you know, visual learners who like to kind of watch videos and follow along. Uh, we have a lot of detailed documentation, user guides. There are different types of uh, you know developers with different approaches to learning, and we're trying to uh, kind of accommodate this whole suite of of uh, approaches to learning. We have on our GitHub um, a whole uh, repository dedicated to a suite of uh, reference models. We have. 30 plus, actually, probably 37 or 40 right now, uh, popular models that we uh, have already ported over to Gaudi. And we publish all the uh, instructions. We publish the model script. So these are very commonly used ones. And so you've got like a way to go in and get started with these models and start adjusting them and playing with them. Uh, very easy to reproduce what we've got on our on our GitHub repository. Oh, three. Um, there's there's quite a lot to software stack besides just TensorFlow and PyTorch APIs. I mean, uh, you know, uh, and I'm not sure what the terminology might be in, in Habana, but there's a there's a CUDA kind of thing. There's CUDEN, and then it, there's like four or five different levels of, right. of uh, competitor support that's provided. That's in, you know pretty much embedded in most of the Linux systems today, or or can be re readily added to those systems. Do you have those sorts of things as well? Yeah, so uh, all of that is encompassed in our in our Synapse AI software suite in terms of doing the optimizations for uh, uh, the uh, Gaudi. It's very Gaudi specific, right? So you need a Gaudi server to be able to do it. So uh, the images are available on our uh, uh, Habana Vault. You can go in there and download the Docker images, or you can install it on bare metal. So it's fairly easy to get started with uh, installing the drivers and the software stack. But of course, you do need the Synapse AI suite, which is Hardware specific, it is it is built for uh, the Habana products, right? The Gaudi platform. Um, we, in terms of CUDA itself, it's like a very broad solution. It's because ours is focused very specifically on deep learning. Um, the the programming models are much smaller. It's focused on like the Python based interfaces with TensorFlow and PyTorch. Who, that's why I said that the, that's the persona that that largely works with our. Uh, deep learning software. And that's why we've been chosen to integrate first with those frameworks. And these 30 plus popular models that you, are, are you formally providing support for these? Absolutely, models? absolutely. 
So you can go to GitHub, file issues, and our, our team will be supporting you if you find issues uh, 100%. You can go to Habana Forum. Uh, we've got our application engineers you know, waiting to answer questions. Uh, our goal is to build a vibrant community. Uh, but again, we, we acknowledge we're at the start of a journey. There's going to be a, a, a period of time where there's going to be a ramp up and uh, users will need a lot of support in, the, in that process. So in whatever form possible, we're going to be there to support. So that, and you've identified the accuracy and the data that's used and, you know, that sort I mean, there's lots yes. of go to, lots of information needs to be provided to say, this is the current model that we're using in this space. Yes, this yes. Where, what it can and can't do effectively, right? Absolutely. So if you, if you, so we provide the model scripts, we provide the actual recipe, the scripts, like the, the code itself. So you can actually run that. We publish the time to train, the throughput, the accuracy, it's all available and publicly published. Okay. So you can go back and try to reproduce it and say, okay, did I get the same numbers? Or if I have a problem, you can report an issue or request support and we'll be there to support you. We understand that the definition of done is you need to be able to get to those results. Otherwise, you know, it's, it's hard to figure out whether you've completed it, uh, you know, the training correctly. You mentioned AWS in your, in your uh, cost slides. You also have uh, solutions in the other hyperscalers at this point, or is that something in the future roadmap? Something to ask the other hyperscalers, right? I cannot speak for the Googles and the Microsofts, but um, of course we want to be present in all of these uh, uh, public cloud services, other CSPs, but uh, that's a question for them actually. Okay. Okay, so coming back to the, what, what do I need to do to get started? Um, this is actually a very simple example, it fits in, in, in the screen, but it actually is reflective of the kind of changes you have to make. This is using an MNIST data set to train a very simple neural network. And you'll notice that everything else that's on the left is in black text is what you would be doing without Gaudi on a GPU or a CPU. And the two lines of code that you introduce in that blue uh, font, uh, that's what you would need to get started with Gaudi. And what this does is you're importing this uh, Habana module and you load the Habana module. And it basically indicates the TensorFlow that you now have this Gaudi, is, Gaudi is referred to as the HPU or Habana processing unit um, is the name for that device uh, in the framework. So it indicates that this is now available as a device. And once this library is loaded, it'll prioritize uh, you know, executing operators on the HPU. Uh, the other thing our software stack does is um, we have we don't ha like we don't crash or if if the operator is not supported on Gaudi right so it falls back to the CPU so your model should work uh, and you'll have a functioning model when you do these two lines of code so that's basically the idea behind making it easy to get started um, then obviously you know there's a lot of work that others you know users will do in terms of improving the model changing the model and then you, you know once you're running on a Gaudi your workflow is very similar to what it would be on another uh, accelerator so we have similar changes for for PyTorch as well uh, any questions on this I hope I answered the question in terms of the code changes required our goal is to absolutely minimize uh, the the barrier to entry and make it as easy as possible um, the other thing I wanted to call out is like a lot of, uh, because our developers uh, work with, uh, with many pieces of the software, they don't stop with just the frameworks. There's this whole ecosystem of tools, model libraries and lightweight frameworks that they are, uh, there's a lot of innovation happening in that space and developers are gravitating and using these tools for their productivity and, and being able to do their model development and, and uh, build out their applications. So, we have now started to kind of uh, in integrate with more of the ecosystem partners and their offerings. So our goal is to meet developers where they are. Uh, this is a very, very large ecosystem, so we can't be everywhere at once. Uh, we're taking our baby steps to start kind of building out these partnerships. I'm going to talk a little bit about the few of the recent partnerships we've, ha we've established and um, how that makes it even more easier to make Gaudi accessible to a larger part of the developer community. Um, three. Do you, do you guys support um, is this HPU? Is that, the, that HPU virtualization so that I could have multiple training jobs use the same hardware, that sort of thing? 
So right now on, on uh, uh, we do support uh, uh, virtualization, like that's limited to one card. You can't break a, a single device into a smaller chunk. So that's the, that's the, the minimum size. Um, on AWS, we only have like an eight card instance right now. That's the only only sizing that we have. But you can you can build out um, with a with smaller size VMs. And the configuration of this is you connect the card to Ethernet. It's not like you're plugging it into the server and be uh, PCIe. Or no, you have to have a server. So this is a data center product, a server class product, uh, and this is an OAM. Uh, card, right? So you have to put it, it, it is in, uh, the only way you get it is to put it in a server, actually. You can't just slot it in G or uh, it's not a PCIe card. Back to the ecosystem partners. Uh, these are the three partners that, you know, we've been working very closely with. Um, Hugging Face is one of the uh, most popular uh, model library out there. Um, they started off with NLP. They have a huge a community of developers. Now they've expanded to other um, areas, computer vision, speech. Uh, this is the place where all of the transformer excitement is happening. Uh, and, and we're excited to be partnering with the Hugging Face team. Uh, PyTorch Lightning is another one where the Grid AI team has built a very lightweight framework on top of PyTorch. So this is for making it easier for data scientists and, and those doing research to focus more on the data science and less on the engineering nuts and bolts to kind of uh, build out the boilerplate code in PyTorch and it abstracts all of that and provides a very high level interface that allows them to just make simple changes focused on the data science. And Converge IO is one of the leaders in uh, providing MLOps solutions. I'll talk a little bit in the next few slides about um, how, it, how this makes access to Gaudi and taking advantage of Gaudi so much more easier by our by our uh, partnerships. So how does PyTorch Lightning make it easier for developers, right? So uh, PyTorch Lightning has, uh, uh, you know, you just have uh, a very high level abstracted interface. And in order to use the HPU, we've now introduced uh, integration to HPU and with Lightning 1.6, um, it is now upstreamed and available by default. So all you have to do now with your lightning trainer is say accelerator equals HPU. And that automatically says, okay, now I'm gonna run on a Gaudi. Uh, you can select the number of default uh, de devices, one to eight. Uh, can, you can do more in the future right now, it's up to eight. Um, and those who are interested in mixed precision, you just enable the HPU precision plugin and set the precision to 16 and you're off running mixed precision training um, on, on your Gaudi devices. But this is literally all it takes to start using um, Gaudi with PyTorch Lightning. Um, you can catch, there, there, there's a lot of videos uh, out there on how easy it's to get started. Again, a lot of examples with other, other models that you can also look at on our, on our documentation and web pages. Um, so this is a, a community that's very active and um, we wanna encourage that community to start using and playing with the HPU and, and I'm excited we were able to make this happen. The second one I'm talking about here is uh, Hugging Face. Um, and Hugging Face also offers an abstraction uh, and they have a transformer library. Uh, what we have done is taken that optimum uh, library uh, from the transformer library and then built the interaction with uh, our Synapse AI integration with Synapse AI. And we have now an optimum Habana library that's available. So the model gets instantiated the same way as a transformer library. So the, for the uh, developers and data scientists, it's like a very small change to get going with transformers, hugging face transformers and Gaudi. The only thing they do is, is load the Gaudi configuration. So you'll see here, uh, they've got to load the library from the Optimum Habana library, the Gaudi configuration, config, trainer, and training arguments. And they invoke those and set it up uh, you know, with, with the Gaudi config and the Gaudi uh, training arguments. And the trainer is simply replaced with the Gaudi trainer here. And that's it. Those are the two or three lines where you're actually changing to Gaudi and you're off training on Gaudi. Uh, we have four models, BERT, Large, Roberta, uh, Distal BERT, and Albert that are already available um, and published with, with the code there. You can try other models as well. And we're going to be publishing more um, as, as we uh, keep working closely with that team. So I'm, again, very excited to be partnering with Hugging Face and uh, the ability to offer the Hugging Face community uh, the ability to train on Gaudi. 
Uh, the last one is Emma Locks, and this is another one, a, a, a place where uh, Converge.io, uh, which is another startup that Intel uh, acquired, uh, we've been working very closely with them. It uh, was built by a, a set of data scientists uh, who wanted to solve a specific problem that uh, and basically enable that there's that the data scientists, programmers, DevOps engineers, IT, there are lots of folks who have to come together to enable an end-to-end -end solution in an enterprise. And data scientists tend to end up taking up a lot of um, non-data science work. And uh, by offering such an MLOps platform, you allow the, the platform to do the work of automating the training and deployment and configuration, managing that life cycle, and then freeing up the data science and even the IT folks to focus on the jobs that they do well, whether it's data science and focusing on the problem. And what we've done recently is basically integrated Gaudi Synapse AI into Converge. So you can use Converge. Uh, it, it is hardware agnostic, but you can, it supports uh, CPUs, GPUs, FPGAs. Uh, so basically you can have a heterogeneous environment. Uh, you can plug in the, uh, if you have a cluster of Gaudis, you can enable them on premise. Or if you choose, you could simply burst to the cloud with DL1 uh, with your existing environment. So you basically are stretching and, and using it in a flexible manner um, and taking advantage of, of this entire uh, automation in terms of MLOps. And this is another thing that uh, makes it easy in terms of end-to-end -end deployment and uh, puts Gaudi in the mix with, with uh, those who are using MLOps.